Hey guys, let's talk about bookkeeper marketing strategies 101. So, give me one sec. I have, to, I have uh, some watermelon slices that I have to eat right now because I am dehydrated. I also have my Pedialyte, Pedialyte sports drink as well as a Gatorade Zero. So a lot of sugar, a lot of potassium, a lot of magnesium. I'm trying to flush my system, just make sure I have a lot of nutrients kind of put in there so I can film these videos today. Um, so how to market your bookkeeping business for success. Okay, so let me share on one, I have a couple different um, angles I'm kind of taking and kind of like thinking about going inside today's video, but the main thing is, the main question I get asked is like how to go and get clients, right? So some people are having challenges like networking, um, some people are having challenges like growing their business. I know when I first got started, I didn't really understand how to utilize the internet to go and get clients. So what that led me to do was doing a lot of like cold calls. I used like websites like Upwork, like Craigslist, and it was very, very hard for me to get just consistent clients. Um, now, also what happened was once I started learning some of the different tips I'm gonna be teaching you like inside today's video, it did make it a lot easier for me to consistently grow my business. My revenue actually started doing more of like a linear graph um, towards $15,000, $16,000 a month, but it took me 15 months to do so. So also if you want some help growing your business, like maybe you've been thinking about starting a business but just not quite growing the way that you wanted to, and you think that if you had a better process and if you had someone that was guiding you through the steps you didn't know, right? Because we only know what we know. We, we don't know what we don't know. It's not our fault, but sometimes it just happens. If you want some help doing that, go ahead and click the link inside the description, either above, below the video, book a call, see if I can help you inside our mentorship program. So boom, boom, boom. First things first, partnerships, okay? Partnerships make the dream work. So the, the one challenge that a lot of people struggle with is in the beginning, most people are just trying to get like their first client. Now, it's not that trying to get your first client is bad, but we never really want it to be just focused on a client by client approach. That's called hunting. That makes you feel like you're hunting all the time. And that's cool like in your first like week, your first two weeks, but it can get very, very, um, tiresome after you start getting more and more clients, maybe you're still working your full-time job and your time becomes more and more sparse. Instead, what you need to start doing is learning how to create partnerships. Creating a partnership is almost like being a farmer, right? Where you're planting a seed and that seed is going to sprout. There's going to be different crops, different size, different harvest, but it's going to be in the future that you're going to be getting this return, right? So I'm always focused on those because it allows me to create these win-win situations that allow me to be able to go and make more money in the future than what I have today, okay? So also when it comes to partnerships, I'm always looking for win-win approaches that both people are going to benefit from. So I'm going to benefit because I'm going to get clients. They're going to benefit because they look good because they just referred their client to someone who was a really, um, really good competent accountant or competent bookkeeper. I'm also looking for like who are the best partners, right? And we're gonna talk about more about like how to identify like the best partners, but the best partners are gonna be people that have influence over your ideal client. So what I mean by that is like generally if they can tell your ideal client to do something, then that's going to mean that the ideal client listens. And we're looking for people to have stuff like that and have some sort of like influence or advice that they give to our potential clients because then our potential clients will listen at a much higher frequency. And then if you can just start really understanding like who is going to speak to not just like um, clients that want to pay you like a little bit amount of money, but like clients that are more established, clients that are like 500 to five, uh, five, sorry, clients that are making between 500,000, about $5 million per year, right? If we can get partners that have access to those type of clients, then growing the business does become a lot more consistent. Now, when it comes to growing our business, I like to accomplish this in a couple different ways. So active and passive, okay? Active and passive, these are different channels and ways we go about getting clients. So I always wanna have two passive, one active, okay? The reason why I like having two passive and one active is because as soon as I start getting busy with my work, the active channel might either drop or I'm gonna have someone else do that active channel for me. But if I can also get some passive ways that clients come to me, it does make the business a lot easier for me to, um, not only run, but it can, the growth can sustain itself. If I'm always a person that's to hunt and has to be the person that's doing everything, my business will always live and die by my energy output. What happens if I have to go on vacation for a week? What happens if 
I get sick for two months, right? If everything is so reliant on my active activity, it just it's it's gonna live and die by me. I also can't sell the business, right? Because just like no one's gonna want to buy something that they have to go and fully fully manage themselves. Now, another thing is right. We talk about passive. Passive is one of our active channels. Now, you could go and uh, do passive channels a couple different ways, but the key thing when it comes to passive is you're looking. Excuse me, one second. My nose is kind of runny. <laughs> I thought I was going to sneeze. When it comes to passive, I like having one source, which is like, you know, 10 to 20 different referral partners that you should give me a client. I also like directory style um, channels. Like that could be like a pro advisor, that can be like a, um, a Yelp, it can be something like that, right? Personally for me, I have... I always encourage our students, like when they're first starting out, like to get like the pro advisor if they have it. Or if they don't have it, you know, try and get it just to see if it will give you some leads. Um, also, LinkedIn could be a passive channel as well. As you get more and more people to see your profile, you're gonna have naturally have people kind of like reach out and move, right? But oftentimes, what's gonna happen over time is that your partnerships are going to like be the main thing, right? So it's like eventually you can let your um, your pro advisor certification laps if you want to because you don't really don't need the leads from that the certification now I also like having active in the beginning like an active channel because it gives you immediate control so now you have both the consistency and the speed right because in the beginning when you're pumped and when you're starting this thing up and you're like moving okay cool that's awesome now you, you can you can do the consistency for at least like a 30 day 60 day 90 day period most people can if you can't I don't know like maybe what you can do is you can hire a virtual assistant if you don't know how to hire a virtual assistant um, I think we're gonna start having videos on this channel you're gonna talk about it I think on our we might put that on our tutorial channel where we've we've another YouTube channel that we, we started um, recently where we're like giving like QuickBooks training uh, bookkeeping training accounting training so I might even do um, some virtual assistance training to kind of show you guys how to hire those because then you don't really need to be the person that's like very consistent right you just have a virtual assistant does it but then I'm also thinking about how to start building multiple streams. Now, in the beginning, right, I think of each referral partner kind of like a different stream. So the main goal would be to get 10 referral partners. So if you just get 10 referral partners to refer you one to four consultation calls over the course of a year, then you're going to grow your business consistently. Most referral partnership calls, like the consultation calls, should close above 80% when your sales skills are in place like if you don't have sales skills and you, you never had a sales script you're just kind of talking you're just kind of winging it i don't i can't say it's gonna be consistent for you but when you do the things right when you have a proper process or even a script on your consultation calls and they come from referrals you're having a very 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 high close rate you don't need that so if they send you one to four right that can be what is that times 10 right so 10 to 40 consultation calls that can be anywhere between 10 clients to 40 clients just like that, in under 24 months, it's under two years, right? And you're already making six figures in your business. If you had, if you got actually technically, if you got 40 clients, let me pull my calculator, 40 clients times 500 per month, you'd already be at 20 grand per month, right? It's just handling 40 clients, that's a lot of clients to kind of manage. Most people aren't gonna be able to do that on their own, so <laughs> you wanna make sure that you're charging above $500 a month if you get that many clients, right? Once you start getting past about 15, that's when you need to jump to like just really jump your prices up not just because like the work is worth it but you need to be able to turn away people that aren't a hundred percent serious about working with you right because I mean you're I've kind of found the sweet spot is right around like 20 to 25 clients right for most people most people are gonna like that kind of zone right because you, you want to have a mix of like who is kind of like your anchor client as well as like some auxiliary like five hundred dollar per month clients right so it's just just really about being diversified and just making sure that that it's not reliant on one thing because in growing a business in the short term you're trying to go for speed in the long term you're going for consistency and diversification so that you can have longevity in this game the reason why i've been in business for not only 10 years for this but also in our mentorship program what 20 19 about five years uh, technically 28 2019 five years is because I not only do good work, right? Like, here's the thing: it's like it's a prerequisite that you do good work. If you don't do good work, like you're you're, you're going to lose all your clients pretty quickly, right? You're going to have bad reviews. People are going to hate you, and they're just not going to like be able to get off the ground because your reputation will be tarnished, right? 
So it's an assumption that you're going to do good work. But we have all these different ways we go about getting clients, right? For example, for our mentorship program, we have a Facebook group. We have a YouTube channel. We have a LinkedIn account. We have an Instagram account. Sometimes Instagram decides to cooperate, right? <laughs> but it's four different ways I can go. I don't really have to do that much work to go get new, new activity. Same thing when it comes to the accounting business, right? You have the LinkedIn. You have the second YouTube channel. We also have a lot of referral partners, right? It's just from being in the game so long, people want to refer work to us. They want to, they want our help. They want to just help us out, right? Because they actually like us. Um, so a good example is from our students is actually one of our students named Audrey. So for her, her different channels, so she has referral partners that are passive. She also has LinkedIn automation as her passive. She also has active, which is going to be like speaking events for her. And then that leads to consistent client acquisition and diversified client sources. So for example, um, she just did a speaking event recently and one of the people in the audience actually wanted to work with her, right? So it's like, it does, you don't really have to do that much. And the cool thing about speaking is almost every single speaking event you do, as long as there's at least 10 people inside of the, the virtual venue, the online venue, the in-person venue, whatever, you're gonna get clients. Now, I know some people don't like speaking. I'm not saying you have to speak. It's just her act that she wanted to do. She. Which when she when she said speaking events like that was crazy to me because like she doesn't like talking to people, right? But she was like, okay, well, it's, well, just give me a client. That's all I gotta do is just speak for ten minutes. I get a client. It's like, why not? Cool, more power to you. Um, and then the passive one, LinkedIn automation. So we teach you how to like automate your LinkedIn, um, so you can start bringing in clients very very consistently. So for her, LinkedIn was a really good source for her, right? But it's all about diversification. Excuse me. Next thing, simplified scripts. Okay, so you want to keep it very, very simple. You don't want to have it to where um, you need 50,000 different scripts. Your script takes two hours to deliver. It's all complicated. Like You need things to be very, very, very consistent, both in booking people on the calls inside of your active channel as well as on your consultation calls. The reason why is because if you're going to do it inside, like let's say you have like a LinkedIn Messenger script, you want your LinkedIn Messenger script to be very simple because eventually you're going to have a virtual assistant take over that messaging for you. So you don't even have to like log into your like your, your accounts. Like for example, for me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn I kind of check it, I kind of don't because like I have a virtual assistant that basically manages it. Same thing with like Facebook, I have a virtual assistant that manages my account, right? So it's like anytime like someone asks a question or stuff, they're forwarding the messages to me and I'll have to like dictate it, but I don't really have to look into it that much. And it's just like, it just flows, it just works, right? So something that was active for me, which was Facebook, is now passive for me because I have the virtual assistant doing that. And then if you're going to make your own like messenger script, one way you can do it, like we give you guys like one of those in our, in our program, but let's say you're not in a program. Let's say that you're just kind of like learning the stuff on your own. So whenever I'm thinking about the message script, I'm going to have a bunch of conversations. Ideally you would have at least a hundred conversations, whether they panned out, or they didn't pan out. Like as long as you have a hundred people that have at least replied to at least one of your messages, you can start building a messenger script, right? Because out of a hundred, you should have already gotten at least one client from that one, maybe two clients from that. Okay, cool. So based on that, you would take, okay, so which conversation got the furthest? So those are like your one to two clients, okay? Which one got the next furthest, the next first, the next first. I'm looking for common threads and common messages that were coming up and like were being asked, right? Because the game, like when you're doing sales and marketing, your goal should be to try and predict what the person is going to do and say before it happens. The only way that you can really get that expertise and really get that, that, future clairvoyance is by having a lot of conversations. I am using the past to predict the future. Now that can be dangerous in some cases, but if you're using it to really predict like these conversations, that's all you need to do. So think about it. So they talk about like AI, so artificial intelligence and how it's like getting smarter and smarter and smarter. It's not necessarily that it like knows every single thing. It's just, it can review all information from the beginning of time to come up with the answer for you. It's like using like Google, it's like, it's, it's, it's almost like a, an automated Google, right? You used to ask Google questions and you had to go through and like read each article one at a time. This thing you ask the question, it goes and Googles it, it reads all the articles and it gives you the, the summary basically right then and there very quickly, right? But they're using the past. They're using the past to predict the future. They're using the past to tell you how to proceed forward. Right? It's just that most people don't get enough information or don't get enough um, understanding of what is happening for them to be able to move forward. 
if you here's a cool thing too if you ever wanted to like create your own message script what you can do is you can actually go talk to um let's say for example if you want to use chat gpt that's the biggest one right now right um you could actually do what's called a customer persona so you can actually have it mimic how someone from like a certain industry talks like how does a landscaper talk how does a construction worker talk how does a um we'll say a therapist talk and based on that, you can practice messenger conversations back and forth to see if you can book them for a consultation call. You would just tell ChatGPT you're doing like a mock um, conversation, right? A mock sales conversation, and please play along with the persona of a therapist. So now you have it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You're talking, you're talking, you're talking, and you're learning. And it's using what's learned in the past to be able to move forward, okay? And then that allows you to free up your time because then you're gonna have the virtual assistant kind of move and take it over, right? So that's simplified scripts. Next is gonna be automations, okay? So we're always looking to automate your sales, your marketing, and the work, right? So in terms of the easiest to automate, the easiest one to automate is going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be the work itself, right? Because you use workflows as well as different tools. They even have a thing called book review that will actually go inside of QuickBooks and will review a lot of the stuff for you. Next, you can hire staff accounts. The reason why I say that that the work is the easiest to either like automate is because you can either automate it or you can outsource it. And there are nine million accounting professionals. I'm not. That's not even counting bookkeepers. That's just counting people that have the word accounting or accountant inside their LinkedIn profile. Nine million people, and a lot of people want to have extra work on the side. So you can literally, as long as you can evaluate who's good versus who's bad, you can really get some good stuff going, get some really good people at a very, very inexpensive price point. So I do like doing automation and like just outsourcing a lot. For me personally, I like, I like outsourcing more than automating. Okay, I know that might sound weird for some people. I like working with more people and like, I know it sounds crazy, like more people, more headaches, right? I've been very good at choosing people that are multifaceted, can grow with me, and are very loyal and very consistent, right? I have hired a lot of bad people in the past, but the ones that have stuck have been very, very good. So for a lot of my team, I don't really have to do anything. For example, like I have um, on our tutorial channel, I have one of my virtual assistants, I, she basically taught herself how to go do video editing, and like she's, she had some pretty good videos very, very quickly. Um, so it's like, it's, it's crazy, right? But I don't really have to like give her that much instruction. So, hey, I'm kind of thinking about this direction. Can you, you know, take some time and figure this thing out? It's like, yeah, by the end of the day, it's better than what I expected it to be. It's better than what I even thought it was going to be. Like it's better than what I had, I had envisioned my mind. And it's like a lot of different things like that. So I like people more so than just, uh, you know, automations and workflows, right? Because automations and workflows, they're going to be as good as like, you know, what's kind of in my head versus people they have their own heads and they can already think a little bit differently man my nose is running give me one sec guys i'm running on fumes how do i pause it? sorry let me keep it back recording in progress oh well, hopefully it doesn't sh so i had to like blow my nose hopefully it doesn't film in two different like uh pieces for both <sighs> i had to do some editing some video editing to come put, put the two together so next thing is financial and time freedom okay so I'm always focused on really set up this business this way because it's going to allow you to have more financial freedom as well as time freedom, right? And we're trying to balance both for success, right? Because you never want to have too much financial freedom, but you've given all your time away. And you never want to have too much time freedom, but you're not making any money, right? So you kind of want to balance a little bit of both. And by building a team at the right key metrics and key spot, you definitely can go and do that, right? So it's just really about like, like if you look at like my business, right? I have two businesses and that's because I had outsourced so much stuff from my main like bookkeeping accounting business. It gave me the time to, be able to set up my mentorship program, right? And like personally for me, I, I could do like a third or a fourth business, but it's just, I don't, I don't want to. I like the amount of time. Like I can still go, um, I go to the grocery store. Like I went to the grocery store today. Sometimes I just go and just like walk around my, my neighborhood. Sometimes I'll go and just like relax. Sometimes I'll go do like a, a private dance lesson during the day. I work out every single day. Sometimes I go get like a, um, a, um, what's it called? Sports therapy massage, right? So it just depends, right? But I found a really good balance of being able to, to live life and be able to really enjoy the money that I've made, right? Because like you know, you don't, you never really want to like make too much money. I say like too much money, like you know, a hundred million dollars, like you know what I mean? Because like 
you want to be able to still have a life around it. So it's really just about making sure that we get our income to a place to where it's at least like five to 10 X thing, whatever our monthly bills are, and then just kind of keeping it there. That's really like the, the sweet spot I've kind of found, right? And like really kind of find that balance between like, you know, buying a bunch of new stuff and really like having our passive, our passive income pay for it. So like for me, for example, I don't generally like to spend money on like luxury stuff unless it comes from like my passive income, right? And that, that was a shift that I had to do because I used to just like, you know, take some of the money from my job and then I would like go and buy, like buy something. Like I would buy like a Rolex or I'd buy like a Movado, right? And it would just be like, you know, it kind of felt like I was working just to pay, you know, Rolex or pay the company, right? So it's like, oh man. Versus nowadays, whenever I buy something that's like special, it comes from passive income from like investments. So I'll make the money from the business and I go and put inside an investment account. Then the investments start growing. And then when the investments grow and they have a certain return, I'll take a percentage of that return and I'll go and buy something, you know, that, that's a luxury. Now I know, okay, Bryce, you're still spending your money to do it, but kind of. It did not take away from my time freedom to go and get that. I was not actually harmed in the making of that excess money to go and do it. And it just naturally keeps flowing and flowing and flowing, right? So just kind of a, a thought process and kind of a different thing that I'm at in this moment in time in my life, right? I, you might see me three years from now change my mind, just like spend all of my income on, on just random stuff, right? I'm not, I'm not predicting that, you know, cause I am pretty frugal when it comes to this stuff. Like I really don't like just spending money just on like random stuff because you know, if you just buy a bunch of stuff too, sometimes it just adds to a bunch of like your life like uh, challenges. So, you know, cause now you have more stuff to manage, <laughs> but it just depends on what you're trying to do in your life. Also, so if you want some help, like, and like this is a, this is part of a bigger conversation, right? How do you structure a business to support your life? If you want help learning what you need to do to not only get clients, but really how to automate the business, how to make sure you have that time and financial freedom to make sure that your life is the way it is. The one thing I, that I never wanted to have happen is I didn't want to kind of like wake up and then be like, oh man, I, I worked so hard, but now I'm in the wrong place. I was moving so fast, but instead of going to my destination, I'm a thousand, you know, thousand miles off course, right? So if you want to make sure that by the time you reach your goal, you're in the right spot and you know exactly what you need to do to make the business more passive so you have longevity of income, go ahead and click the link inside the description, either above or below the video to book a call with myself um, to see if I can help you inside of our program, okay? It, I can't help everybody, right? We are a little bit selective with who we work with because we want to make sure the people that we do work with, it's the best fit possible because I have to work with on a very close um, basis and I want to make sure that if I do accept your money, I want to make sure there's a tangible return. So if that's you, I'd love to see you on the call. If you're not quite ready, that's A-OK -okay too. Um, I'd love to see you inside of one of our next videos uh, or even in the comment section, okay? Hopefully you have a good rest of your day. Take it easy. Talk to you soon.